just as it'd be lovely for you just to repeat what you repeated Thursday night because I was so excited. So which one would you like to go first? Oh, look, Edith's first. I'll go and sit down then. No. <laughs> okay. Right, thank you very much. Um, we've been doing prayer and, prayer and healing for two weeks. And the first week, we came into threes. There's Veronica and Terry and me. And they asked, what do you want to pray for? I said, well, I've got this pain in my back. I've had it since January. I had a kidney infection in January. And it left me with this dull, achy pain. So Veronica prayed for me. And nothing, of course. But get up Friday morning and thought, oh, I can't feel anything. And I didn't say anything for a few days, just in case. And it had gone. It had gone. So thank you for praying for me and thank the Lord for doing it for me. A little bit the same, actually. Um, and uh, I missed the first session. We were away. And um, uh, last Sunday, when, when there was um, uh, an opportunity for prayer, and um, Paul and Joan, and uh, they brought an apprentice along, and they were over on this side here, and, uh, and they, they said, anybody that wants prayer, and I thought, I'd got, I'd got a bad, I'd had a bad back, and I'd had it for weeks and weeks, and I was all right if I was up, but do that, oh, and it killed, it abs- and just getting up out of the chair, in bed, was wrecked, absolutely, uh, very, very painful, and um, I-, I could see the folks over there, and they were, they were praying with each other, and, and I got to share something with Darren, and I thought, I will go. Uh, even though they'd got an apprentice with them, I will go. So I went over, and uh, still in my head, a bit doubtful, but I thought, I'm going, uh, because the pain was that bad. And um, they were praying for me, and uh, Paul, ke- you know, Paul kept saying, has the pain gone? And it, it hadn't. So they prayed a bit more, and it hadn't. And I thought, well, there, it, it, it you know, it hasn't gone, perhaps I'm not good enough or something like that. And to be fair, uh, what they did was then pray and ask me to pray. And um, Paul said something that he felt God was telling him. And I thought, that's great. Um, and then he said, has the pain gone? And he said, no, it's not gone. Uh, and it, I'd still got it. So we got home and Elaine had uh, cooked some uh, food. And uh, we have sandwiches at Sunday lunch, so... We sat down on the city and we were eating sandwiches and I was sitting there and I was mulling it through and it was just like somebody put a hot water bottle on me back and it was great. It was so comforting, the hot, this heat in me back was um, and it had gone. The pain had got so much so as I waxed two cars in the afternoon, I cleaned them and gave them a good waxing uh, because I'd bought this new wax and I wanted to try it out, you see. So I'd, I'd, I'd wax the cars. And uh, no pain. It was absolutely great. Um, and I'm thankful to God. I'm thankful to God that even when we're unfaithful, even when we doubt, he's faithful. And he's great, he is. And on Thursday, I shared with the group that we were with, Howard and B and Edith, And I met a a client in the week. And when he met me, he was on two sticks like this. And apparently, his bones are breaking and and shearing. His bones are actually... um, He went out for a meal and he couldn't stand up. And then a bone broke. And I felt so much for this man. and, And because of this newfound... I wanted to pray for him, but didn't dare. I didn't dare say, do you mind if I put my hands on you in case he hit me with one of his sticks? So I shared it with the group because I felt that I should have prayed with him. And I felt guilty. I felt really guilty that I'd not shared my faith in God with this man who was in desperate need. So we prayed on Thursday and we prayed that God's Spirit would give us opportunities and give us chances and Friday morning, I got a phone call off this man. 
And he, he phoned me and he says, John, he says, I'm just phoning you to tell you how sorry I am that I didn't make you a cup of tea when you were there. And what an opportunity to share my faith in God with this man. And so on Friday morning, I told him that we would pray for him and for his condition. And I'm convinced that distance is no problem to God. Absolutely convinced. So if you could add John to your prayer lists. Because he said to me, he says, listen, could have prayed with me. He says, I say a little prayer every night. So this man has a modicum of faith. And we have a great God, don't we? And I just wanted to share that with you. Um, so anybody here today? Well, lead us in prayer for John now. Okay. Well, all I'm going to say is that I've met a couple of folks already this morning that I, well, one or two actually, that could do with some, you know, prayer. And uh, I've already met them in the corridor coming in and in my mind as they were telling me, I thought, you need to go to God. We need to pray for the forever, you know. So, anybody that's got any pains, even bad backs and bad aches and pains, take them to God because he'll deal with it. He, great God. Well, can I, can, before you pray for John, he's, he's just listening to the, the testimonies of, of people. We've just Edith and John this morning. Um, we, we, we've got so much to thank God for, but it's clear that God's up to something here. So therefore, don't go home today if you need prayer. There'll be prayer available at the end of the service. And just like, you know, John and Edith have, have uh, you know, just had prayer, just allow God to minister to you today through the, the people who are praying, you know, will be available at the front, if you like, of this building today. So uh, don't go today if you need prayer, because if you do go home and you're still in pain, you'll be thinking to yourself, what about, why, why didn't I go and have some prayer? Two healings we've had in the last couple of weeks at St. John's, and wouldn't it be amazing if on a weekly basis we would be able to say, there's more healings, there's more healings, there's more lives that have been touched, because my heart is not just for the, the body here, my heart is for anybody from this area who needs prayer, I would love for them just to come rushing to here and need prayer. Wouldn't that be amazing if we heard hundreds and hundreds of testimonies of God's healing? So please don't go home today if you need prayer because God is up to something here. And we're going to pray for John now because that long distance prayer, faith as small as a mustard seed, let's pray. please. Okay. Shall we pray? Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, that you're so faithful. Thank you, Lord, that you're a God of second chances. Thank you, Lord, that you don't count us unworthy, that, Lord, that you love us so much, and that, Lord, that you want, you want to heal us, you want to make our lives better, Lord. Lord, as we pray now, as I promised John, Lord, we do pray for John out there in Derby. Lord, so many miles away, but so close to you. Lord, as we pray now, I pray that your healing hand would be upon him. I pray, Lord, as we reach out, that, Lord, in our prayers, that you would hear us and that John would be healed. I pray for this condition of his bones. And that, Lord, just as in the valley you joined bodies and sinews and flesh together and you poured your spirit upon them, Lord, I pray for John now. I pray that his bones would be healed. I pray that his body would be healed, Lord. And I also pray that your spirit, your Holy Spirit, would come upon him. And his testimony would be that there is a living God. And I pray, Lord, that he would share it with all the friends at the garage and all the people that he knows. And I pray, Lord, that he would celebrate you. And I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.